thank you for inviting me to talk to you today. As a Noongar, Wongai and Yamaji man, I'm proud to be able to speak to this forum and trust it will support you in learning more about the opportunities to progress this important work. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodians of the land on which we are all connecting from throughout Australia. Their continuing connection to land, waters and community. I pay my respects to the people, culture and elders past and present. I'm sorry I'm not able to join you in person, but I'm very pleased to be speaking to you from Noongar country here in Perth. The last 12 months were difficult, but have reminded us how important our relationships, our communities and country are able to sustain us through these times. I'm also encouraged by forums like this that find ways to continue to support Indigenous and other land managers to come together to strengthen connections, share successes and learnings and identify opportunities to grow and expand the collective knowledge. To the rangers attending this forum, I acknowledge your strong connection to country and the extremely important work you do to conserve it. Your work is instrumental in protecting your land and sea country for the benefit of your culture and heritage and your communities. Remember, you are also part of a national effort. Indigenous ranger projects provide an important foundation for improved economic, cultural and social outcomes. In addition to generating environmental benefits, Indigenous rangers projects can act as incubators for the development of fee-for-service capability positioning many Indigenous ranger organisations to generate revenue and create jobs through commercial activity, contributing to local and regional economic growth. Increasingly, I hear that organisations are looking to convert their experience in land and water management into commercial opportunities and growing local economies. The work of the Indigenous land and fire managers is a particular success story. Strong outcomes are already being achieved by utilising traditional knowledges and practices to undertake savannah fire management across Northern Australia, while generating employment and income streams for your communities through the carbon abatement market. As you will be aware, a great example of this work is that of Wakankan Land Management, who work together with the NT industry the Northern Territory Government and Community in the Arnhem Land Fire Abatement Alpha NT project to reduce greenhouse gas emissions through fire management practices at the landscape scale. Each, this, each year, this project engages over 50 ranges in prescribed burning and wildfire suppression activities. I note that this market is international it wasn't all that long ago that I was approached for information about our ability to assist European airlines to meet increased carbon abatement requirements. I'm pleased to learn that the Indigenous land managers will deliver more than 30 emission reduction projects valued at over 100 million over the next 10 years through the Australian Government's Emissions Reduction Fund. Through this work, you demonstrate the vital traditional, the traditional role that culture plays alongside modern science and methods. The Australian Government is committed to growing these opportunities through the ongoing agenda under the White Paper on Developing Northern Australia. This aims to activate economic opportunities on Indigenous estates, including commercial opportunities through the emerging natural capital markets and connecting Indigenous knowledge with science and technology. In addition, the Government has partnered with the Queensland and Northern Territory Governments to support Indigenous participation in the Emissions Reduction Fund through the work of your hosts today, the Indigenous Carbon Industry Network. Under the Government's Climate Solutions Fund, there is also strong interest in the voluntary carbon market for emissions reduction projects that have other environmental, cultural and economic benefits. The private sector, including banks, airlines, superannuation funds and universities, obtain certification under the Australian Government's Climate Active Carbon Neutral Standard 
to purchase carbon credits from projects involving Indigenous communities. The Australian Government is, has also supported the Carbon Market Institute to develop an online marketplace for carbon projects to share stories and promote purchasing opportunities for projects with multiple benefits, such as the Indigenous Savannah Fire Management Project. As you are aware, many of these are underpinned by the Indigenous Ranger and the Indigenous Protected Area Programs funded from the Indigenous Advancement Strategy. As Indigenous land managers, you are making a significant contribution, combining traditional and contemporary knowledge to actively manage and protect biodiversity and cultural heritage that is valued and benefits all Australians, while also contributing to the national and international effort to mitigate the impact of climate change. The Indigenous Ranger and Indigenous Protected Areas program employs more than 3,000 people in land and sea management across this country. The Australian Government is committed to this important work we know these programs not only play a significant role in the health and well-being of country, but your own well-being and that of your families and communities. This is why I've committed to extend funding for the Indigenous Rangers program to 2028, bringing the Australian Government's investment to more than 1.45 billion for Indigenous Rangers and 180 million for Indigenous protected areas over 15 years to 2028. Today, there are 128 ranger groups and 78 dedicated Indigenous protected areas across the country. I'm very pleased to see that this includes increasing numbers of women participating in ranger activities, as well as dedicated women ranger groups. Women have a critical contribution to make in looking after country and working with traditional owners young people and the wider community to ensure cultural knowledges and practices are strengthened and maintained. The number of Indigenous protected areas rose in 2020 with the dedication of two new areas in Western Australia. This includes Nurupa'a in the Great Sandy Desert, adding 2.9 million hectares to the total Indigenous protected area estate. Australia's Indigenous protected areas now cover over 74 million hectares of land that contributes more than 46% of Australia's national reserve system. Strengthening our ability to protect our nation's precious biodiversity while providing jobs supporting communities and traditional owners to conserve environment and cultural values for future generations. Following the extreme 2019-2020 bushfire season, fire management, including Indigenous traditional fire practices, have received significant attention across the country. Last year, in its recommendations, the Royal Commission into the National Nat Natural Disaster Arrangements called for all governments to engage with traditional owners to explore the role Indigenous land and fire management practices can play in improving Australia's resilience to natural disasters and the management of public land. The Australian Government continues to work with state and territory governments to encourage them in this effort while supporting the important role of Indigenous ranger groups in natural and cultural resource management across Australia. As the Prime Minister stated in his address at the National Press Club, we must learn from Indigenous Australians and their ancient practices how to improve our resilience to bushfire threats. They know more about this than we ever could, and they stand ready to work closely with us. You are ahead of the, the rest of Australia in this effort, and I look forward to the continued progress you all make in this important work and wish you well for a very successful forum. And I thank you for the work that you do and the way in which you care for country. Take care.